Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the front lines of this bitter war with Black Ulm. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dominions 4, The Thrones of Ascension. We are Ulm, and we are forging ahead. And actually, I kind of gave you a peek at the future. I probably shouldn't have done that. Let's, uh, let's look at the spring in the year four of the Ascension Wars. Let's see what happened. We researched another level of conjuration. The Chief Smith has claimed the Throne of Ice. Platinum Black and Rin are searching to no avail. We are continuing to solicit blood donations in Oe Perry. And there was a battle in Omur. That is the army, not the Arcade Knight army, but the other one. And Black Ulm is attacking us. They're bringing a ton of their leader Frau, who actually look pretty badass, and a ton of their native Black Olmian troops, and it looks like they are being led into battle. Wow, we just tore them up. Did you see that? And they they, they had enough of that. They were just like, uh-uh. <laughs> we're getting out of here. There's a scorpion beast as well. And of course, our glorious armies, who are guarded by only a few, a handful of pikemen, and a few guardians as well. Wow, that was pretty uninspiring. Oh, a spring fairy has been sighted, spreading joy and laughter in the land. Growth and luck plus two in Emnace. Well, I don't know if the smiths and black priests of Ulm are going to be particularly happy about a spring fairy, but hey, at least it's a good event. So they lost four infantry, eight knock walkers and that was enough apparently to send them running we didn't take out their commander and we didn't lose anything and we're just patrolling in a lot of places all right well first of all let's oops first of all we're out of money but let's introduce you to our people so in the royal forest we have wolf wolf is a commander of Ulm. We've already given him a crossbow. Then in Umbro, we have Wombat, also a commander of Ulm. In Iron Range, we have Nathan, another commander of Ulm. In Ogwoods, we have F. Boley, who has two fire, so got a fire random. That was pretty good. In Oe Perry, we have Swimming with Sharks, in Ulm itself, we have Tower Cap. And we are finally moving on the Dark Blue Sea. Despite basically being able to rampage through our lands unhindered, the god of Black Ulm, Alsvin, has apparently gone to the Lake of Gods, since that's the only province I can't see. So we're moving in with Hannah Banana, who was originally sent in to try to take out Alsvin to retake the province. Now, Hannah Banana is not arguably outfitted for this, that is to take a province. She only has crossbowmen, but I have given her some fire gems and she's scripted to summon some will-o'-wisps and fire elementals. So that should be enough to take out whatever province defense they have in here. The only weird thing that would happen is if Alsvin moved back in. In which case, well, I hope Hannah makes it out. So, okay, what else do we got here? I've already introduced you to Wombat. So that's... That's everyone. Okay, that's all the new people. So what's going on? Well, we're attacking the Dark Blue Sea with all of our Mermen and Grumzub. Grubzub's going in there with a... With some Earth Boots, with a Water Breathing Ring, and a Luck Pendant. So hopefully they'll be able to take this one out. And then I guess next turn, all of our money is going to go into province defensing it. And then we can... If there's uh, recruitable troops there that are decent... Maybe we can do something with it. We'll see. But it's just a way to, from us to protect our heartland. You know, so people just can't attack it willy-nilly. If we get the Dark Blue Sea, the Infinite Sea can only attack Wold. And the Lake of God can only attack Kobos. So we've got pretty much it all set up. Caractacus is researching now because everything around here has already been searched to 2 Earth and 2 Fire. 
we have Ethna up here searching, and we have Rin moving to the Royal Forest to continue searching, while Soups forges an endless wine uh, skin, I guess. Stalker, we're going to actually rest with you for a turn. We're moving Damaris, Viriato, Havel the Rock, Blank, Kuna, or Kuna's searching. Ewok MP and Walden of Ulm, they're all going to Omer. I was thinking perhaps of splitting them up, but I decided to put them all in Omur because the next turn I want Omur to move out somewhere. As you can see, Black Ulm is bringing the house here. They've got 60 units here, including three large scorpion beasts. We have 90 units here, which is mostly dispossessed spirits and soulless warriors. And we have 220 units here in Runia, dispossessed spirits, infantries of Ulm, Lederfrau, Noctwalkers and Arbalestiers. It appears the only thing they're really summoning with any regularity is Scorpion Beasts. So I'm not too worried about that. And Nathan is defending the Iron Range while Lord Lucius is building a lab. We should probably get someone down there who can build a temple as well. Chief Smith is searching for magic sites here in the Range of Shadow while Chief Mikey is guarding him to make sure the barbarians who may attack next turn do not get him. All right, Azerd. We're going to try to get you down to Iron Range to build a... To build a temple. I'm just trying to see here if you have... No, you just have Guardians. Okay, you're fine. And that's actually really all I got to say, folks. Not much is going on here. We gained another level in Conjuration, but we're still far away from where we want to be. And our money is just not keeping up. I'm not forging anything this turn that requires Earth Gems, because I'm really, really trying to save them up. I want to cast Earth Blood Deep Well. However, the only person who can cast it is Chief Smith. So once he's finished searching the Range of Shadow, I think I'm going to move him to the Royal Forest, and then we'll get him started on forging necessary items. One last thing to report is that King Strategist, our Smith King Strategist, has volunteered to undergo some experiments in the empowerment of blood magic. So he's taking a lot of the reserve blood that we were able to draw from the um, volunteers, and he is going to try to empower himself in it. Now he's going to have to do so three times in order to be able to forge bloodstones, but he seems to be uh, in good spirits and willing to take the chances that may ensue. So there we have it. Let's end the turn. Dragons usually appear in a human form, more suitable for magic. Okay, Chief Smith has found a magic site in the Range of Shadow. The Broken Tower. Ethna and Kuna have found nothing. There was a battle in Holoma where... Okay, so this is that area with the knights. And this is going to give us a good opportunity to see what these guys are bringing to the fight. And oh my goodness, this is quite interesting here. We have... A Kamazot, who is a blood, death, and air mage, old age. Seems pretty weak in general. He has a blood slave hanging out with him. And a bunch of bone fiends, which are demon troops. They were able to mass these guys pretty quickly. That's not good. We have this usual barbarians. We have some mooch jungle warriors. And some chalk mooch dart throwers. Some Zots warriors. Dispossessed Spirits. Is that their god? No, it's just a Jade Serpent. So it's a big monster, a big recruitable sacred monster with a standard effect. Interesting. Then we have some Long Dead. They're, they seem to be bringing a lot of gelatinous cubes, three of them, which are interesting enemies, I guess. They're pretty much resistant to everything, and they can swallow a, a unit when they trample it. Interesting. This is new, I think. Anyone who attacks one of these things also gets splashed by acid. Wow, what a kind of pain-in-the-ass enemy. Along with them, we have a bunch of clay men, apparently. Which is a water? A water summon? Water and fire, maybe? There's Zach Simi, the Mooch Kahul. He is a earth, water, and death mage and a priest. He's got some gems. And we have... Uh, this thing here, a jaguar toad, a sacred, I know that Mictlan has these, it's a sacred toad thing, along with a cave drake, and it looks like, oh, and an ice drake too, wow, they, 
Looks like Shibalba is really just using all their gems to summon things. We have Horned Serpents. There's the Ice Drake. And finally, we have a Mount King named Screech. <laughs> oh, man. It reminds me of Saved by the Bell. All right. Let's see how things go, huh? I mean, these are knights, but they're being attacked by pretty much everything. But hopefully they'll be able to kill some things. That would be nice. Nope, they're already running. They just It's too much for them. This mass of magical creatures. Do we have any kind of... Nope, no range support. They're all running. They lost 41 units, but it doesn't appear that they've lost anything really worthwhile. Three of the Bone Fiends, I guess. That's pretty good. But none of their leaders. Their Jaguar Toad and Jaguar Serpent and Gelatinous Cubes all came out of it. Okay. Alright, here's our attack on Dark Blue Sea. Let's see how it goes. There are our Mermen. Oh boy, Amber Clan? I don't know. No, I don't think I don't think we're gonna win this one. Amber Clan are tough. But that means if we do ever manage to take this province, we can do really good things with it. We're strength of giants looks like ourself, so that's not very helpful. We might have a chance here. Grums up his cast Legions of Steel, which was really stupid because he takes no armor. Doesn't matter though, it looks like we are victorious. And we are. I don't know how that happened. I don't know what in the earth was happening there, but we won the battle. We lost 24 of our 40 mermen. But now, maybe we can uh, build a lab and summon some things. Although I don't know what earth or fire summons can be useful underwater. We'll see. All right, Kopos. This is uh, Hannah Banana. I didn't think they had time to put in some strong province defense. And they really didn't. This should be fine. Unless Hannah goes down to a straight arrow blast. Which I actually wasn't considering. No, we've got this. We probably don't even need the elementals. Oh, there goes one of them anyway. I was just thinking with an icy dominion, fire elemental seems like it'd be a difficult thing to cast. Oh, they're the Will of the Wisps, and they're already... They've got them. They're taking out the Black Ohm Commander. You can see them, these little guys here. They're basically little fire spirits. They're very, very weak, but uh, they are ethereal. And they have perfect morale, being mindless magic beings. And they got them. Nice. All right, Range of Shadow. A huge barbarian horde has attacked and pillaged the province. Umidor. A trader's guild has been established, permanently increasing tax revenue. That's perfect. Province income plus 50. And Range of Shadow. The Chief Smith is actually going to run away, I think. Yeah, I think he's already gone. And now we have Chief Mikey. And the province defense. So there's Chief Mikey. And he's being assisted by Theodoric. And here come the barbs. They're making short work of our militia. But the militia is buying them time. Buying the arbalist time, or archers, whatever we have here. And we've got them routed. Excellent. Excellent. That was a fantastic turn for us. Alright, so who's new? We have Gontran. Gontran is going to be... Crusader. We'll take the Crusade, the Black Ulm, and the monsters, and whatever else threatens the stability of Ulm. In Oe Perry, we have Gazorius. Welcome, Gazorius, Master Smith. In Umbro, oops, I think I forgot to change it back from Commanders to Smiths, but we have Alfred, who is now going to be George White. And I have to remember to change that back to Smiths. Which means there's probably going to be another commander in Royal Forest. And that's true. We've got Destry. Soul. Yep, that's correct. 
in iron range. We didn't recruit anybody, so we're okay there. And there's Chief Smith just hanging out. Let's get him to Royal Forest where it's safe. Or even Og Woods. Nope, can't make to Og Woods, so Royal Forest. And in Og Woods, we have another Smith, Mason. All right, I think that's everyone of our recruited leaders this turn. Alright, so I don't know where Alsvin is. But I know that we need to get some Amber Clans here. So let's uh let's really invest in this province. I know it's taking most of our money and I know we don't have much of it, but it's worth it. Alright, but Grum's up he's not actually what we need here, to be fair. Let's move him back. We need a priest to be able to Bless. Not bless, but um, Sermon of Courage, everyone, because that's they're going to need morale. Nothing that Grumzub can really do helps them. Although, I guess Legions of Steel actually would work against these guys because they do have armor. Our guys don't have armor, but the province defense does. And there already is a laboratory here. Interesting. That's cool. And we can recruit an Amber Clan mage. And that's actually a brilliant idea. It has two water out of the gate, which can summon things for us. And it has a 10% chance of fire nature. So if anything, it's good for sight searching. And Amber Clan in general, yeah, they have shields. So you know what? Well, what kind of morale does Amber Clan have? 11, that's pretty good. But still, I want a, I want a priest in here. I think that's worth more to me actually than legions of steel in this instance. In Kopos, we're gonna give him a basic. They are border province, so we are gonna give him twenty. But I'm not very confident in it. I gotta stop doing that. Get Hannah Banana out of there. Still no hostilities between Riley and Black Olmor. If there are, we're not witnessing it, and or Pelagia as well. Maybe Alsvin is coming back up here to engage in this battle. Who knows? But now that Chief Mikey is free... Oh, let's see we, the Broken Tower. Let's see that, first of all. Two Death Gems. Well, not that useful to us, but we can convert them at least. Alright, what we'll do is we'll send Chief Mikey in to drop off troops with the people who are already here. And it looks like we have an opportunity here because they've moved all their troops here to Runia. So we're going to have our initial group stay here, but we're going to have Havel's team, since they have infantry, I believe. Yeah, Havel has infantry, so he's going to lead the march into Zox and hopefully destroy that temple there, while everyone who is already here... We'll send Private LSD with them, since he's not part of this big group. Yeah, he's just kind of on his own here, so we'll, we'll put him with them. Meanwhile, everybody's going to stay here. Platinum Black will do a search. And Kuna will head to Hogwoods. Alright, folks. Well, that's really all about it. Um, I'll just be doing a little bit of movement, obviously, between episodes, as I've become accustomed to. We pretty much firmly control this throne, even if we don't have access to it. I mean, we could easily walk over and take it whenever we feel like. And uh, they cannot. Because they don't have... Although they should be able to. Because they have a cold dominion as well. So I'm not entirely sure why that is not possible. This is. But I'll take it. That's fine. And then, of course, we have pretty great access to the Sun Throne here. They don't look like they have much in the way of troops in these places. In fact, Winter Peaks no longer has units in it. Of course, that doesn't mean anything. Because they have good province defense, as we saw before. Cluentius is going to get out of Haloma. Oh! And Anko. Anko is here. I forgot to mention it. He has the Ranger's Boots and the Ranger's Cloak, which gives him 110 stealth. What that means, technically, is that if they are patrolling the province with 110 men, or the equivalent of good patrollers that total up to 110, they have a 50% chance of finding him. Obviously, if they have less than that, they have less chance. So Anko is now one of our main scouts. And I've also scripted him to retreat. 
I'm going to try to be careful with him. I'm not going to send him deep in enemy territory. He's just going to scout the borders. But they should not be able to find him. He is uh, amazingly well stealth. And that's about that. So, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. We are, of course, Ulm. And we will continue to forge ahead. Have a good one.